Hello and welcome to the Friday, March 23rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last year, GitHub introduced an exciting feature where they will scan repositories in order to figure out if they depend on known vulnerable components. Initially, GitHub found over 4 million vulnerabilities in over 500,000 repositories. Now, of course, that's just the first step. Do developers resolve those issues? That's actually uh, not that bad. By December 1st, they had about 450,000 out of these 4 million vulnerabilities addressed, either by removing the vulnerable component or by updating it. Since then, these rates have improved somewhat. More recently, they state that within the first week, they had 30% of the vulnerabilities being addressed. 15% of the alerts were dismissed. So the developers saw it, but didn't do anything about it. The remaining repositories for the most part are essentially stale, meaning that there was no contribution for the last 90 days. So not perfect yet, but uh, still better than nothing. And I think a 30% response rate of actually fixing the vulnerabilities is uh, probably higher than what I would have expected across all those diverse projects on GitHub. GitHub promises to improve this feature further and also to look more into what they can do to alert developers of security vulnerabilities. And then we got an interesting older vulnerability in Apple's macOS High Sierra. Now that's the latest, greatest version of macOS. However, if you still run an early version of it, meaning 10.13.1, then you may be logging passwords for any external password protected drives that you are mounting on your system. This happens if you're using the APFS, the Apple file system on, for example, a USB stick and you're encrypting that using file vault, the command line parameter that's being used to actually mount this password protected volume is being locked. And with that, your password shows up in clear text in some system logs. This has been fixed apparently in later versions of Mac OS, at least in the current one I tried myself. It's not reproducible. Also, people stated as of 10.13.2, it's also no longer being locked. And Xavier today is writing about an interesting little system that he set up to automate some of the sort of security orchestration parts behind analyzing possible malicious files being sent over the network. It all starts out with Pro. Pro has the ability to log all files that are being sent across the network. Now, you don't have to log the entire file. All you typically log with Pro in its files log is the file name and IP addresses, and most importantly, the MD5 and SHA-1 hash of any file. So now what you can do is you can go through the log and extract all these hashes. And then what uh, Xavier did here is to write a script to automatically feed those hashes into the Hive and MIPS. That's where you check if any of these hashes have been been known to be malicious over the last 30 days. Pretty neat little project. You can then also throw, of course, VirusTotal into it. Don't send the files to VirusTotal, just the hash. And that should give you another data point to figure out if this file is possibly malicious. And if you're running Visual Studio Code, another piece of software that you probably should update quickly. Apparently, old versions before 1.19.3 listened on TCP port 9333. This port was used for debugging, but it was enabled even if you didn't explicitly turn it on. The problem with this port is that it does accept HTTP requests. And with that, even though it only listens on loopback via DNS rebinding, an attacker could send arbitrary requests to the port. And with that, 
execute arbitrary code on the developer's system. So overall, not the easiest thing to exploit, but yet again, we have one of these HTTP APIs that's listening on a loopback interface, but is still exploitable because it is vulnerable to DNS rebinding. DNS rebinding isn't the easiest attack out there to pull off. An attacker would first need to trick you to visit the attacker's website. Then the attacker will change DNS entries for the attacker's website, not for your website, which then is used to essentially have the browser consider the attacker's website and localhost as same origin. So if you need something to do over the weekend, read up on DNS rebinding. This is something that is really coming back now with all of these HTTP APIs listening on the loopback interface. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.